Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this video we have our first launch of the Sagitta Super Heavy, uh, one with four boosters. And that's because it's lifting up our xenon gas tank, our first xenon gas tank, there'll be another one, plus the hydrazine we need for the EVA that will allow us to rearrange the trusses hopefully. Uh, there are other complications but I'm, I'm gonna manually launch this and then we'll talk about them on the way. So, ignition. Only the boosters ignite first. The core does not on the Super Heavy. Bit of a recoil on that structure. Interesting shading right now. I guess it's the time of day. So yeah, I made a special xenon gas tank part. I don't know if it looks great. We'll see in space. It's possible for me, there goes the structure again, uh, it's possible that I can replace the model of it without, with it still being attached to the Mars ship, Mars transfer vehicle, if I decide I'm dissatisfied with how it looks. As long as the dimensions roughly stay the same, the collider and all stays the same and everything, but maybe I'll just keep it the way it is, we'll see. Uh, I will uh, post videos on how I made the model in Blender and how I imported it into Kerbal Space Program. It's just a fuel tank, so that's a simple part for those who are interested in making models for Kerbal Space Program. It's a good one to start off with. So I'll make a video on how I made it. It's not complicated, this one. It's just a sphere with some structure around it and little plates for the attachment of the, of the docking ports. But I go through some of the basic Blender functions in Blender 2.8. I actually have to somewhat relearn Blender myself because of the upgrade to 2.8, which is a major revision. It's changed a lot. Um, this is like the first major revision in like 10 years. So lots to adapt to. Things are not in the same place anymore. If you are just Getting on board on Blender though, this is a good time because uh, it's not likely to change so radically in the next 10 years. <laughs> this would be a good time to learn it because you'll just learn the new conventions. Hopefully you'll find videos that are also using 2.8 so that you get the updated information or know where to go to find stuff. I'll try and make some myself. As I need parts, I will make the parts in Blender and show how I make it. Um, not that I'm necessarily the best person to listen to for Blender because I'm sort of a novice still. The, there are pluses and minuses to that. We're actually using the tallest fairing. That's not because we need the vertical space, but rather we needed the horizontal space. You can see the body of the part there, and it just barely fits. The tallest fairing is also the widest. Unfortunately, we don't have really a stubby fairing. Per se. I expect that we will have a fair amount of Delta V left over, by the way. I could have slapped the single ED4 boosters onto a Sajita Heavy, the two booster one, but I decided to go with this instead. Well, I wanted to know exactly how much extra it would have. Okay, let's ignite the core. And booster set. Nice clean booster set for these. Because I've made them properly. <laughs> Unlike the ED4 boosters. I probably put the separation transform in the right place for the ED4 boosters. The problem is uh, that was without the engine at the bottom, or the little Pac-Man encapsulation device, or the parachutes, you know, so, yeah. Okay, fairing set. So this is what I made. It's just a gold foil thing with some structure around it so that the tank itself doesn't bear, like, all of the acceleration or whatever. You could imagine, you know, uh, stringers inside the tank instead. Probably better that way, but I wanted to make something different, right? I just wanted to make it look a little bit different. 
and we have the propellant only docking ports there and we've got the little procedural hydrazine tanks I didn't want to make special hydrazine tanks and this should decouple regularly from the, the docking port at the bottom there so that's not going to be a problem this time hopefully hopefully Actually, I checked it on the pad. I actually decoupled it and reverted, but still no guarantees as long as I don't know what the heck is going on. Um, the mass of the tank, uh, the dry mass is 10% uh, of the total mass. You can see 40 tons right now. The Sajita Super Heavy is roughly the same capability as a Falcon Heavy can see that that's the case right now. 40 tons would not be at the limit for the Falcon Heavy either in uh, non reusable mode. And same with this, we are expecting some leftovers. It was about the same mass on the launch pad. I think this is like 1,400 on launch pad or something like that. Tons. Oh god, I don't have enough electric charge, I don't think. Uh, I forgot all about that. There's no solar power on here or anything. I keep forgetting that. I need to make a permanent extra battery in this supper stage. We'll see. I might have to redo this just for that. But you can see why the tug might have a little bit of trouble grabbing onto this might not be able to pass that collider. I doubt it. So then the tug will have to get edge on instead of at the normal docking port. And that's going to make uh, docking with this awkward. Okay, separation and ignition and nozzle extension and um, we've got the right ISP. And well, crossfeed was not enabled. Let's enable crossfeed now. We have a little less than two hours if we want to go by the electric charge we have here. So, one orbit? <laughs> I don't think so. Got a tangent point, but we're quite a ways away from the station. We're over here. Station's all the way out here. We can catch up, but not in two hours. Yeah, I'm just gonna redo this one. So retrograde. Let's. Oh, maybe this is a good time to check. Well, we'll retrograde and then we'll check that it decouples properly. We'll call it a. Up. Oh, no, I wanted to physical time warp. Check on the decoupling to make sure that that's all right. I mean, good thing we're not in career mode where this will be an expensive sort of situation. But in career mode, I'd take a little bit more care, I suppose. So we are in orbit with 1,500 meters per second left, and that sort of tracks if we're going with uh, this is supposed to be equivalent to Falcon Heavy, and it's about equivalent to Falcon Heavy. Okay, that'll be pretty decisive, and decouple. All right, so that is possible. All right, but let me add some more power. Maybe we should add, uh, maybe there's a way of adding RC, temporary RCS thrusters to it. I don't know, that might be a bad idea. We'll just try the tugs. I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to redo this, but we'll try and see if the tug can handle it. And then if that doesn't work, I might have to add another sort of RCS module to this. Okay, because the Xenon tank itself is a service module tank, I decided to sneak the electric charge in there. Probably a Xenon gas tank would need some electric charge to handle things. So, I mean, at least sensors and such. So that's my argument. I'll probably um, keep this as short as possible. I've decided to allow some relative inclination in favor of having the Mars transfer vehicle right behind us so that we're catching up to it. And yep, so we'll correct that on launch. With that, ignition. And launch. 
So we'll keep this as short as possible and get on with things. Okay, ignition. And separation. Ooh, really close on the noses. That wasn't quite nominal. I think the thrust from the engines actually knocked them a little bit. Also, we're a little bit lower this time, I feel. Okay, fairing separation. Separation and nozzle extension all as well and enable cross feed for the RCS ports. Uh, we might need to do an apoapsis burn this time and then manage it as well as it did last time. Hmm. Also we need to slow down a bit. It didn't actually manage to pass us. Let's take advantage of all the Delta V that we have here and just meet it on the next go around. Sure hope these thrusters are able to settle the fuel down with this being as heavy as it is. Heaviest load so far. Should be able to. Uh, there we go. Took a while though. Really pushing it. I may need to put more thrusters on the stage when we have a heavy load, but I, I like to standardize things, so... Okay, after some painstaking maneuvering with the RCS, I've gotten it to this point, and I want to see how much of this fuel we can transfer out to the tugs. First, I'm going to top off the electric charge back there, so that we can eventually deorbit it. But we've got a fair amount of fuel here that we can transfer out. Unfortunately, we're not docking this entirely to the station, otherwise we could do a little bit easier. But it's way hard to control this with these tiny 100 Newton thrusters. So, well, first of all, which tug has the least? This one. Okay, um, this has the propellant only on that end, that's fine. Okay, let's have this undock and uh, refuel itself using the fuel back there. So again, this is just refueling this tug, we're not actually grabbing the xenon tank yet. Okay, kill rotation. In fact, I don't trust Smart ASS, just SAS. Hold that. That thing's still using his thrusters. Fortunately, they don't do a whole lot, so... Except in really long periods of time. So hopefully they won't disturb the docking procedure. It seems like they're locked on on forward for some reason. Oh, I guess I had my throttle up. Nope, let's not do that here, though. Maybe that's why. Um, let's slow down. Uh, yeah, it was left with throttle up. I mean, I guess it's possible that tugs can grab at this point, which is one reason why I decided that this would be a good one to send out first, since it's not actually going to grab the xenon tank. Still, even with the tank at that location, it'd be it's gonna be tough to maneuver given the sheer size relation. I mean, look, there's just 3.7 tons. That tank is 40. So now this will have more heft once it's got fuel in. So that's good. Oops, I've got it the wrong way around. Well, in this case, it's not a huge deal. Yeah. 
uh, the, the leftover fuel in this stage can easily fuel up both tugs. They're really light. Uh, I probably should have brought the... Use this to bring that in a little bit. Okay, slow down, slow down. Uh, we went past. Okay, this tug is back in. And let's get this one out and see what we can do. Oh, caps lock is on. Mm, okay, maybe that wasn't the reason why this isn't showing its bloom. Uh, let me just... Nope, still not why it's not showing its bloom. <laughs> okay, great. Complications. Anyway, let's try this docking port and see if it's any good. Okay, this time we're oriented right. Now, will we fit? That's the question. I, I don't think so. Not in this direction. I mean, then we'll have to switch to this docking port, and then we're not exactly in the best situation for docking it. Just a little bit more of an extension on the front end would have helped. Like even a cylindrical tank. Yeah, no. Bump. Bump. Nope. Okay. Okay. Uh, come on. Oh, too much. There we go. Okay, first of all, let's top this off. Well, now the xenon tank is in the tug's hands. Decouple. And the stage can end its job. All right, that should be good enough. Now, this is going to be hard. Whoa, um, physical time warp seems to change way too much about our situation. Well, as you might expect, I'm gonna make it somewhat easier on myself by just rotating the station. So, Hopefully this doesn't cause too much chaos. Another thing we can do eventually is send up uh, one of the bigger tugs, which can grab this size module. We're I'm planning to have two of these small ones and then two of the big ones. The two small ones will sort of do retro burns and the two big ones will be on the tail doing the forward burns. Yeah, this isn't going to be easy, and I'm definitely going to be using the opposite side to help out with this. And it makes it harder that it doesn't want to show me where the RCS is blowing. I mean, it's working. The RCS is working. It's just not showing it to me. The other, the other tug worked. It teaches me to dock the two tugs together, and everything went awry ever since then, as far as I could tell. Uh, not bad though, right now. Looks not bad. This is definitely not the right roll orientation though. Can't quite see. It looks like the dark spot is on the right, maybe? And then we're gonna have to pull this off and put it in the back afterwards. This is not its final location. Okay, don't wiggle too much.
Oh, it was too fast for this load. Forward, please. Okay, we were attached. That was a little bit awkward looking, but that could have been worse. Relatively painless. Okay. Good times. Well, now. Now, um, Bill is still in here. Let's have Bill EVA and try things out again. He's already suited up. Okay, Bill now has Hydrazine. Okay, now we have to figure out what to do about that truss. Hmm, maybe we should get that stage off first, I don't know. Well, grabbing is too heavy. Uh, we could disassemble parts. But then this this is the parent part for that, so it's not going to let me, is it? Okay, any other hotkeys? Oh, detach. Um, okay, well, something is floating away from something else. This is the stage. Well, uh, other way. Let's pull it back. Okay, so that's a start. This is... Can we uh, grab that? Yeah, it looks like. Can we uh, put it in inventory? How big is it? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, if I click detach on this, will that float off or will this float off from that? Hmm. <laughs> that didn't help. But I didn't actually attach it, did I? Shouldn't it float off? I didn't tell it to be drilled there. Uh, yep. Um, would really like to deorbit it rather than... Wait, I can probably destruct it right now. Disassemble part. Aha! Okay, and this... Uh, that's probably still the parent. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and... That means this is now disassemblable. All right. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Let's get our Kerbal back inside. We need a tug to grab this now. Okay, grab and board. Okay, let's clear the stage off. Well, it still has electric charge. Okay, so that's done. We disassembled other things, so now it's just one free truss that we need to manipulate. And it's got no control, so we better be careful. And let's use this. Well, no, this one has the center mounted one. So it's going to be the one with the job again. Unfortunately, still no sign of the actual RCS thrust. Okay, why don't I set this as target just as a reference, because otherwise I'd have no idea where the heck I'm going. Well, way closer than I needed to be. Okay, well, this is obviously not the right rotation. Um, Somewhere 9 degrees from this is correct. That that truss is actually going towards those panels. Um, emergency. Emergency. Mm, retraxel panel. Retraxel panel. Okay, why is it rotating? Um... That one, that might must be rotating, I guess. It's very subtle. Not quite a 2001 situation, but pretty darn close. Okay, we've grabbed it. No, oh, we've lost control. Well, good thing we weren't aiming very close to things. 
why did I change tar oh because it was too far away um that's okay that's not good <laughs> no 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 please just stop stop okay we're getting some sunrise but we floated quite a bit away okay finally set us target negative parallel and maybe I can get the Mars vessel to turn towards us just for the heck of it for old time's sake these are sort of in the wrong direction <laughs> because of our problems but oh well obviously this set was supposed to be pointed in the same direction as the other set but it won't be that big a deal compared to other failures in previous iterations of things its reaction wheel is just so weak it doesn't even appear to be turning so RCS it is Lunsat 2. Well, we're not going to pay attention to Lunsat 2 right now. I think Smart ASS is better at handling, holding me in a position while I'm trying to translate, even though my RCS ports are nowhere near the center of mass. It seems to be much better at doing that recently. Otherwise, docking that Xenon tank would have been much harder. Let's get the long view of things. Okay, our sides match, so that's good. Okay, for a sec there, I was worried it wouldn't connect. Okay, everything seems to be good now hopefully uh, these seem to be in line okay let's get the tug off uh, it needs to grab that xenon tank but well let's uh, well let's keep those in we've got enough electric charge for the time being well now we're gonna have to control from here and grab that tank so because it actually generates artificial gravity using the propellant as a counterweight, uh, the floors are actually sort of like this, in this direction. So there'll be a floor here and a floor here, and probably a floor at the bottom of this one and on, at the bottom of that one inside the modules. Of course, it's only meant to spin to provide Mars gravity, so they can easily deal, you know, pull themselves wherever they need to be. They're not fighting against Earth gravity. In this case, the floors would not be solid. They'd be sort of a grid like in Skylab. And so it'll be assembled. Obviously before they start spinning things up. <laughs> okay, we are connected. Now this is gonna be tough here we go again with the xenon tank I, don't know, I guess it looks alright in context maybe, maybe it's okay oh uh, no uh, control from here don't bash the station control from here uh, stay stable just being very careful obviously not trying to go very fast. No, no, please don't go off to the other side. Uh, okay, hold on. I think I'm going to turn the main ship instead of complicating matters unnecessarily. Then again, turning the main ship does complicate things unnecessarily. Oh god. No, slow down, slow down. Uh, 
Oh, oh, good. Well, that was sloppy, but it worked. Okay, well, it's all together now. Let's just not have RCS on, please. Okay, well, until we orient to the sun, anyway. Time for the solar panels and radiators. We'll need another xenon tank at least. Probably more. Well, one mate. Oh, you know, the way they rotate, my, I need to lock these radiators. I don't want to pivot them. I want them to just stick out. The, no! See this not pivot? This means you should not pivot so that you don't hit those solar panels. Sometimes. See, pivot off. Extend and it pivots. False advertising. Well, it's okay for now. And just for show, I'm gonna lock the. I'm gonna secure these, even though that doesn't actually do anything in particular. It'll just make me happier after all this business. Make a show of clamping them all together finally. Okay, so that's that. Now we need to make sure that we rotate towards the sun. Let's control from here for reference. Problem is the roll thrusters aren't exactly outboard right now. So there's not a huge amount of roll authority. I should have transferred the fuel from that stage into the station before having it go off. We needed that methane and oxygen, darn it. Well, actually, probably most of it goes in here in the service module. Well, a fair chunk of it, so actually we're not that empty. Stop rotating, please. Is it slow? Ah, it's slow enough that the time word trick works, <laughs> even with persistent rotation. Okay, well, I mean, with all this solar panelry, we better not lose power. But here we are. We've got uh, assembled to this point. So another xenon tank, and then maybe the the ion thrust unit, and then more or less this part will be done. Then we have to figure out how to. Maybe add uh, the lander. The lander is another thing. Do I have a... I tried to put a treadmill in here and it still hasn't worked. So that limits our comfort level. Mars Transfer Vehicle 3. I wonder how it got to 3. <laughs> uh, all this undocking and docking caused this, I assume. We only have one year of lithium hydroxide, it says. Um, nitrogen is good. A water should be recycled. We'll have to see. Verify that. Um, otherwise, I mean, I think we have like a, a month's short on food and oxygen, and that's probably because they've been here for a little while. It says, ideal uh, living space and comfort is modest. Oh, exercise, yes. It says that there is exercise, so maybe it did add it to here and it just doesn't show up. Okay, so we've got we've got a exercise a treadmill in there. No panorama. We can call home. Um, they're not alone. There's no firm ground. I don't know if spinning it will help on that. So okay, but it doesn't tell me how long they'll enjoy staying here. That's one problem. So far, are they stressed? No stress. Nobody has any stress. So good times. Right, what's the best view to leave this with? I guess we'll leave it like this. Those are Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Mercury, Venus. God, that's a quite a collection right there. All right, let's drop the HUD and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.